Hey geometers, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to learn some new constructions. So we're going to learn some perpendicular constructions. So your homework is a worksheet that looks like this. You're going to learn how to do parallel and perpendiculars. Um, there's three different perpendiculars you're going to learn and one parallel construction. Okay, remember that all of these constructions can be found at mathopenreference.com. Okay, and these are all lines. For example, we're going to use for parallel, we're just going to use the angle copy method. Okay, so again, it looks something like this. You can just click run. It'll run through it. Um, or you can go next, next, next. You can also print out um, the step-by-step -step instructions. Here's printable instructions. Okay, um, and there's other things that you can do. Okay, so this is actually what we're going to do for parallel lines. We're going to use the angle copy method. But let's go ahead and switch to this and here we go so i have my i have my handy dandy compass i have my straight edge which for my straight edge i'm simply using a um, what am i using i'm using a protractor okay and i'm going to show you three perpendicular constructions and one parallel so the first perpendicular construction is you're going to be given a line segment And you're going to be asked to draw the perpendicular bisector or construct the perpendicular bisector. Okay, so let me zoom in just a little bit. So if you just visualize what a perpendicular bisector looks like, well, perpendicular, obviously, it's going to be something like that. Then bisector means it's going to go right through the midpoint. Okay, so how do we do this without using a measuring tool? Okay, well, it's actually really easy. You just open up your compass to any setting that is bigger than approximately one half. So just kind of visualize, estimate where you think the midpoint is, then open up your compass to anything bigger than that midpoint. Okay, and you can go all the way to the other point, but you don't have to. It's kind of a waste. Just anything that's bigger. Okay, so I'm going to use that. And then I'm just going to make one big arc. Okay, and then keeping your compass on the same setting, put the pointy end on the other end point, make another big arc. And remember I called this the football construction, right? The football construction. So this perpendicular goes right through these two points of intersection. So there is your perpendicular bisector. Okay, and we can label it and name it and write some notation, but I think we did that last time. So now, what we're going to do is we're also going to do another perpendicular, but with this perpendicular, we're going to have some kind of line or line segment. It doesn't matter. Let's say that this is now a line. And they're going to give you a point on the line somewhere. So let's say this point right here. And they're going to say, can you construct a perpendicular to this line? Let's call this line M. Okay. Construct a line that is perpendicular to line M that goes through point A. So it's going to go through here. Okay. So to do that, what you're going to do is you're just going to simply kind of cheat and make this into a line segment and then just do this construction. Okay. So right now it's a line. So we're going to just open up your compass to some medium setting and create a, make this a line segment. So make an arc here and an arc on the other side. Okay. If you want, you can just make this one really big arc. You don't have to. It's a little bit of a waste, but some people like to do it this way. Just make it one really big arc. And now these intersection points are equidistant. Okay, So this is now the midpoint of this segment. And so we're just going to do the exact same construction we did up here, but now here's your segment. So put your compass on one of these intersection points, which is kind of the end point of your segment, and just open it up a little bit wider. And then make an arc up above with that same compass setting and your compass on the other intersection point, make an arc up above. Now we don't have to make the entire football because we don't need this lower intersection point because we have this point already, okay, which is actually the midpoint of this segment that we created. Okay, so what do we do? Just connect these two dots right here. It's right here and there. There you go. There is your perpendicular through point A. So this is called perpendicular through a point. 
on the line. Because point A is on the line. Okay. Now we're going to do something similar, but now the point is going to be not on the line. Okay. So now I'm going to be given some kind of line. And now I have a point, and let's put it over here to the side a little. Let's offset it a little bit. Okay. And now can we make a perpendicular through a point not on the line, also known as an exterior point? So to do that, what we're going to do is make a smiley face. Okay. So we're going to put our compass on point A and open it up so that it is bigger than the line. It goes beyond the line. Okay. And then simply make a smiley face. And then you see these two points, this point right here and this point right here, these two intersection points. Well, now you're going to move your compass to each one of those intersection points. You don't even have to change your compass. You can just leave it where it's at and make an arc below and then make another arc below. Okay, and these are your two points that determine the perpendicular. Okay, so now I know that that pur purple line is indeed perpendicular to that red line. Okay, all right, so those are the three perpendiculars that you have to know. Okay, one is one you learned before, the perpendicular bisector of a segment. The second one is you're given a line and a point on the line, and you just cheat. You just kind of make this into a segment, okay, where this is the midpoint, and then you're basically doing the same construction. Okay, and then the third is where you have a point not on the line. You make the smiley face, then just move the compass and make an arc below, kind of the chin of the smiley face, okay? So there you go. So I guess if you wanted to, uh, you could call this a smiley face with a nose, I like to call this the football, smiley face with the nose, smiley face with the chin. There you go. So now let's go ahead and do a parallel. There are different ways to make parallel lines, to construct parallel lines, but we are going to use the angle copy method. Okay. So you're going to be given a line. Let's call this line M. And you're going to be given a point that's not on the line. Let's call it point A. And can we create a parallel line? parallel, okay, to line M through point A, okay? So we're going to draw, or we're going to construct a, a line that goes through this point that's parallel to this. So if we visualize it, it's going to go kind of like that, okay? So how do we do this construction? We use what's called the angle copy method. We're really good at copying angles, so we're going to make this an angle copy. We're going to make this an angle, and it doesn't matter how obtuse or how acute you make this. I always make it kind of roughly, I don't know, something like this, maybe 50-ish degrees, something like that. Okay, so we make this an angle. So now this vertex corresponds to point A. Okay, This point is going to be the vertex of this angle. Point A is the vertex of the angle that we're going to copy. So we're just going to take this angle that we created and copy it at vertex A. Okay, so how do we copy an angle? We open up our compass to some medium setting, put it on the original vertex, the angle, the angle that we're trying to copy. Then we move it to the vertex at point A, and we transcribe that same arc. Okay, so this arc corresponds to this arc. Okay, now the last step is we go ahead and open up our compass from one intersection point to the other intersection point. Okay, and then we just transcribe that arc. So we're just chopping off, and we're sort of chopping off how much of this angle we want or how much of this arc we want. Okay, so now those two points, this point and this point, determine the line. Okay, so let's call this line L. So we know that line L is parallel to line M. All right, that's all I have. Hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next video.